Barakataya Hawa, Barakataya Hawa Shah, Barakataya Hawa, Barakataya Hawa Shah. All praise to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shah, Bashim Kakadash. Yahweh be in the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shah, be in the name of His only begotten Son, who they eagerly called Jesus Christ. Now, when you go into the nations and the Israelites, it's a clear cut understanding, um, and it's very plain on how the Lord feel about the nations and the Israelites because he made it known through his word and through his uh, holy prophets, which are the messengers uh, on earth to give the message to the people. Now, when you go into um, the nations in Israel, it was always a battle. That's why he was known as the vengeful, vengeful God of the old, so-called Old Testament. And you had King David um, couldn't build the temple because he was always at war with these nations. And he had so much blood on his hand from killing these nations. And so... Um, Let's go into the scriptures and see how the Lord feel about these other nations. And uh, let's see if it was going to change or it was going to stay the same. Now, first of all, let's get Isaiah 40, 17. Okay, I'm going to start with 1 and 2 to give the context. It says, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, says your God. So the, 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 what he was conveying or writing about was the comfort of the children of Israel, these things was going to comfort them. These things they needed to know to comfort themselves. Verse 2, speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem. See, he was speaking comfortably to Jerusalem, the children of Israel, and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is Pardon, for she has received the Lord's hand double for all her sins. So in the midst of the sins um, and the pretty much warfare that was going on with the nation of Israel and Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh he was comforting his people. And he got Isaiah to write this to comfort them. And so this is why he was bringing out verse 17. He said, and nation, meaning the Gentile, before him are as nothing. And they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. See, this is why he was comforting these Israelites and the children of Jerusalem with these words. Now when you go into Zephaniah 2 and 8. It's the same thing. Say, for thus says the Lord of hosts, after the glory have he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. For he that touches you touches the apple of his eye. So it was the nations that was coming up against the Israelites. See, it was always a nation against the Israelites. And they was um, going to be sent to the Israelites, or the Israelites was going to be sent to them to be their slaves. 
That's why Yahweh told them in Matthew 20, I mean Luke 21, 24, he told them that they were going to slavery in all nations. So that was the Lord's hand uh, being executed upon them double. Them going into slavery under these other nations. That's how they was blessing the other nations. See, they was being servants to the other nations. So these people was coming up against the Israelites. That's why the Israelites needed comfort. Look at Psalms 2. It says, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and their rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying. See, they came against the children of Israel. Let's see the totality of what they said. Psalm 83. Get right to the point and say, They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted against your hidden one. They have said, Come and let them let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Verse 5. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. And it names all the nations. Edom, the so-called white men. Ishmael, Ishmaelites, the Arab. Moab, the Chinese. Hagarim, the African. Gabal and Ammon, the Japanese. Amalek, another, the top tribe of the Edomites, the so-called white men. And so... Then you go into Psalm 64. <laughs> it says, verse 2, Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. So these other nations, they was going to come against the Israelites. And the Israelites were being confident, saying, by, 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 told, by being told that while these wicked uh, Edomites with, the, with these other nations coming against you, plotting against you, that uh, they are nothing. They are vanity. See, don't be afraid of them. They are vanity. They, they are not and nothing and nothing is profitable about them in my eyes. You're the apple of my eye. Now when you're going to um second Ezra six the I mean second Ezra six, starting at verse forty fifty four. It said, And after these Adam also whom you have made Lord of all your creatures, of him whom we all, and the people against whom you have chosen it says of him come we all so everybody come from Adam the Adam was the uh, forefather of all the nations verse 5 it says all this have I spoken before you O Lord because you made it the world for our sakes 56, it says, as for the other people, which also come from Adam. See, these other nations. You have said they are nothing, but be like unto spittle, and have likened the abundance of them unto the drop that falleth from a vessel. It says, verse 57, and now, O Lord, behold, these heathens, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and devour us. So this is what why the Israelites needed to be comforted, comforted with these words. This is why the prophet Isaiah uh, was speaking comfortably to Jerusalem, saying that 
these other nations are, are, are nothing to the Most High. They have been rule, rule, lords over us because the Lord is punishing us. See, but when our iniquity is accomplished and pardoned, he's going to end that uh, punishment and we're going to be lords over them. See, the change was going to come. Let me get that with a couple of verses. Isaiah 14 and 2 is saying, The people shall take them and bring them to their place in the house of Israel, Salakia. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for service and handmaids, and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. Okay. Then you're going to, let's see here. Jeremiah 30, 16. It says, Therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all your adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. All right. Going to the New Testament. Yahawashah, talking about the beast and the kings of the earth. Revelation 13 and 9. Say, if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kill with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. So this is going to be the conclusion of these nations, they're going to go into slavery. Let's get Daniel. Daniel 2, 44, it says, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, shall not be left to any heathens. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, all these heathens who have a kingdom. This day of kingdom is going to be consumed, and it shall stand forever. And let's get that foundational scripture. Isaiah 14, it says, All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. See, these other nations have a kingdom. Zechariah 11 and 5, it says, Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty, and they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich, and their own shepherds pity them not. So the, the reason why these other nations uh, are pretty much being um, considered as nothing also is because these individuals is, have, have ruled and uh, had the Israelites as their slaves and the Israelites didn't have shepherds. That shows you who the Israelites, the ones who don't got shepherds standing up for them. They can be slain and slaughtered like the Native American Indian and the descendants of slaves. They can be slain and murdered, and no nobody is there to take up for them and to have pity for them. Let's get that. Isaiah 42. Let's see. It says, um, where is it? Which one was it? Okay, verse 22, it says, But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are 
hid in prison houses. They are for prey none of none delivereth or a spoil, and none says restore. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? See, who understands that the Israelites have no protection under these heathens? See, the heathens was given a, a, a time to rule. That's what Yahweh was bringing out in Luke 21, 24. It says, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captives into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So the Gentiles had a time to rule in their own land and lie in glory. See, and then it's going to be a time for these Gentiles to be captives under the Israelites. Let's get that in Amos. Um, Peter quoted, or James quoted, quoted this um, verse in Amos. 11 and 12, it said, And in that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. And the reason he's saying, well, not the reason, but um, David, under David, all the 12 tribes was united. It says, um, and close up the bridges thereof, meaning it's not, not going to be a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom. And I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it up as in the days of old. 12, that they may possess the remnant of Eden, Edom and all the heathen. You see? So, these heathens are nothing because they're going to be uh, just uh, the, the peasants and the, the, the servants and handmaids under the Israelites who, the, who are the king and the priests. They're going to like uh, Revelation 5 and 10 and say they're going to reign on the earth as, as kings and priests. See, what's that? Revelation 1 and 6. They're going to be kings and priests unto the Lord. And so, this is why these other nations are as le less than nothing. But I'm going to leave it there. All praises to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shah, Shalom.